Hey, this is Jerry from Blitz Studio. And in this tutorial series, we're going to set up helix jump. And in this particular tutorial, we're gonna set up our ball to bounce and the basic platform. Now, if you're ready to give this a bounce, let's go. Okay, so here we are in Unity. And I wanna go ahead and start building the platforms that are gonna be for our game. So how are we gonna do that? I'm gonna go ahead and use Pro Builder to build the platforms that the ball jumps on. So I have Pro Builder installed. And I also have Pro Grids installed as well. It allows me to snap to a specific grid point. So I'm gonna go ahead and click and then drag out. And I'm gonna do this a three by three uh, grid, one unit tall. Now, the thing that I need to do is to make this more into platforms. The way we're gonna do that is with our thickness. This is the thickness of the pipe. So if you see how we can make this a lot thicker, I'm gonna go down to where it's you know, almost to the very, very center of the area. Then I'm gonna make the height a little bit less. So let's make that point two. And that looks something like what we need, but I need more of the platforms themselves. So the way this is broken down into six sides. So depending on what number of degrees that you wanna use, you're gonna increase the size or decrease the size. So let's go ahead and just make this 12 sides. That way each of the platforms that you create are going to be 30 degrees. We need to get this set up so we just have one of those pie pieces. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all the faces that I do not need, and I'm gonna go ahead and delete those. Okay, so there we go. We should have something that looks like this, but we need these sides to be closed off. So what we're gonna do is to use the edge selector and I'm gonna select both the two edges on the top and the bottom on one side, and then we're gonna go ahead and use the bridge edges tool. And then that fills that side in. So let's go ahead and flip over to the other side, and we'll do the same thing. And there we go, we now have a completed pie piece. So let's go ahead and just make a material for this real quick. And I'm just gonna make this a green color for now. And that works. Let's go ahead and drag that over onto our game object. And there we go, we now have a platform. So I'm gonna go ahead and then take these and I'm gonna rearrange these back into the original completed 360 degree circle. So I'll be right back. Because I just rotated those 30 degrees each time and then that creates a 360 degree circle. So what I need to also do with these is I need to tag these platforms as platform. Okay, so I wanna go ahead and add a tag. So let's go add a tag. And I wanna add a new tag and we're gonna call this platform. Cool, and then that, once I have that, then I need to just select these and then tag those with the tag of platform. There we go, so we now have our platform. We're gonna take this and create this as a prefab, but before we do that, we also need to add a cylinder. Now. We could potentially, with the helix jump, add a big long cylinder and then just add the platforms, but I'm gonna go ahead and just add the cylinder as part of each of the platform segments. And then that way, we, if we modify these, we can go ahead and just generate what those platforms are. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new 3D game object and I'm gonna have this just be a cylinder. And let's just make sure that is at the zero, zero, And then we also want to make sure that our platform is centered as well. And we're just a little bit off, so let's go ahead and move that. And because I have Pro Grids, it just snaps right into place, which is perfect. There we go. I want to go ahead and move this cylinder up just a little bit. Perfect, there we go. So that's exactly what we need. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take all of these platforms, I'm gonna bring those into my cylinder. I'm gonna go ahead and just name this as platform. Perfect, even though these inside pieces are platform as well, it's perfectly fine. I don't need a capsule collider on this, so I can go ahead and remove that component because we're not gonna actually collide with the cylinder. We're only gonna collide with the platform pieces themselves. Okay, so now that we've done that, we can go ahead and take this and make it a prefab. So let's go ahead and drag this platform down into our prefabs folder. And there we go, we now have a prefab that we can use over and over again. Now the cool thing is that I can, once I have this prefab made, I can drag in an instance of it and I can remove any of these specific platform pieces 
that I want. And then we have a hole in our platform. Okay, let's go ahead and undo that. Now the next thing we need to do is to go ahead and create our ball. So let's go ahead and create a new 3D sphere. And the sphere is probably gonna be just a little bit big, so let's go ahead and make it a little bit smaller. I'm gonna take that down to 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. And that's probably about the size, let's make it just a little bit bigger, maybe 0.4. Yeah, there we go. The other thing that I want to do is go ahead and get my camera in the right position. So we need to exact, determine exactly where my camera should be. Something, now that ball looks a little bit too big. Make sure our ball is kind of where we need it to be. I'm gonna go ahead and just turn off my pro grid real quick. Let's go ahead and turn that back on. Kind of get that centered up and rotated. Once we have that kind of in the direction that we want it to be, then I'm gonna go ahead and select my camera and hit Command Shift F or Control Shift F on the PC. And then we can have, we re rearrange our view of the platforms. Yeah, there we go, perfect. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just relabel this ball as ball or the sphere as ball. And I'm gonna go ahead and just move it up above our platform. That really doesn't matter. I need to add a material to our ball because I don't want it to look gray just like the cylinder. And I wanna go ahead and make the cylinder a little bit darker as well. So let's add a material to that as well. So let's just make a new material and we'll call this cylinder. Go ahead and add that to my cylinder. And I'm gonna make this a darker color. Well, let's go ahead and create a red material. So I'm gonna create a material and I'll call this HJ ball. Let me go ahead and drag that onto my ball and then I just need to change the color. So whatever color we want. Red looks good. Maybe let's make, push it a little on the orangey side. I'm gonna go ahead and change from metallic to specular and change the smoothness down just a little bit. Well, we can maybe make it a shiny ball. Yeah, there we go, that works. So what we wanna do is have our ball fall. So first we need to add a rigid body. So I'm gonna add a rigid body component and we want to make sure it's rigid body and not rigid body 2D. And also, if you want this to fall, you need to have use gravity checked. So we can do that. So let's go ahead and get this to play real quick. Boom, our ball falls, but it doesn't bounce. So we could potentially add a physics material. So let's go ahead and just do that real quick. I'm going to go ahead and create a new material and physics material right here. And let's just call this HJ bounce. All right, so I have that physics material. I'm gonna add that to my ball. So I'm just gonna drag it right onto my ball. And the place that that gets added to is our collider. So you can see that there's a material for the collider and that is meant to be a physics material. So with that physics material selected, you can see that there's uh, a bunch of different options here. Dynamic friction, static friction, and bounce. So I'm gonna go ahead and take friction all the way down to zero. And I'm gonna go ahead and increase bounce to one. So let's go ahead and give this a play real quick to see what happens. And now our ball bounces. If I want to make this bounce more, I can also add a bounce material to the platforms themselves and then the comb combination of the ball and the platform will then make the ball bounce higher. But we don't want to do it that way. So I'm going to go ahead and take my ball and I'm going to remove that bounce material because we don't need it. So. How are we gonna make our ball bounce? Well, we're gonna go ahead and use Playmaker to do that, and we're gonna add force to our ball. So I'm gonna go ahead and first create a game manager. And the reason we wanna create a game manager is that all of our scripts or most of the scripts are gonna be in one spot, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and add a new empty game object underneath, and I'll call this ball. Now with the ball, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and create a Playmaker FSM for this. So I'm going to create a new FSM on the ball, which is the empty game object in our game manager. And we'll go ahead and just label this because we might have multiple FSMs. So we'll call this ball bounce. The first thing we need to do is to detect if our ball has hit that platform. So I'm going to go ahead and I want to detect ball hit. So how are we going to do that? Well, we are going to do a we're going to do a collision event. So, collision event. 
And with that collision event, what we're doing is we want to check the game object of ball. So I'm going to select my ball, drag that down in. That's the game object that we want to continually check on. When it has detected a collision event with another game object, and we want it to be a specific game object, when it's detected the platform, that's why we tagged it, we want to send a new event. So I'm going to go and add a new event, and we'll just call this bounce ball. Add that transition, go over to a new state, and then we want to have this be bounce ball. What we want to do is when the ball has hit that platform, we're going to add some force to it. So let's go ahead and do an add force action. So we're going to do add force, not add force 2D. And we need, and it's saying, hey, you need to add a rigid body. Well, our player does have a rigid body on it. So let's make sure we're using the player or our ball. And that's the game object we're going to add force to. And then we see that that error goes away. Now, the, the other thing that we want to do is to add force in the Y direction. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm not going to use a variable for this. So I'm going to uncheck and then I can just hard code a number. I'm going to go ahead and just put in four because I know that's the about the right amount that I want for this specific bounce. And I do not want to check every frame. And then the force mode is impulse. So I want it to be just an immediate burst. So let's just give that a test real quick to see if it works. Boom, there we go, so that worked. Now, but our ball only bounced once. And the reason it only bounced once is because we're going off to this bounce ball state, but we're not going back to our detect ball hit. Okay, so once we're done with this, we need to do a finished transition, then go right back to detect ball. So now let's give this a test. Now, once our ball hits, it should continually just bounce. And because we're adding force every time it hits, and it's a very specific amount, our ball is going to bounce in a very predictable manner. And that's exactly what we want. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and it's something you can use for your game. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and that little bell icon down there so you know when the next tutorial is available. Until next time.